So AI is, uh, in general, it's getting a computer to make a decision that a human would normally make. And for Con Air, that definition, uh, as we look at auxiliary equipment, uh, we define artificial intelligence as a, a means of combining our expert uh, operational experience uh, combined with live data and processing power. And when you combine these, you get the ability to automate complicated mechanical changes without human intervention. So for us, it's actually having a change made mechanically driven by all of these inputs. What AI does is takes all this information that we have, all this knowledge that we have of the shrink numbers, of the size of the parts, the flow lens, etc., and it puts it together a model and say, okay, now you want to build another part which is very similar, and this is a number, it'll actually basically predict what these things, uh, what the shrinkage should be, or what the size of the tool should be, or the cavity should be, so now you don't have to redo all that work again. One of the newest and biggest trends is the use of large language models uh, in plastics. So there's really two kinds of AI. There's machine learning, which is used for things like predictive analytics, and this has been in plastics for a while now. But the big new technology that has come out in just the last 13 or 14 months from the beginning of 2023 is the use of large language models uh, to be able to learn useful information, tribal knowledge, uh, that kind of thing um, in the plastics industry. Day-to-day -day life, everybody's already using AI. The best example I give is of Google Maps. You're going from point A to point B and Google has already figured out how much time it takes by multiple people. And in that, you know, sub routes, people have taken and it takes the data and tells you now, it predicts you go from point A to point Z, what is the time it will take. We have at the show, for example, we have conveying with optimizers. So in this situation, you can have material, you can have air, and you have to have a, a relationship of those two, right? So you have a, a ratio. And in current situations, you could have somebody uh, 30 feet or 300 feet away from a silo uh, distribution box to the, to the, uh, to the equipment uh, on walkie-talkies talking about dialing it in. In this case, there's no human intervention. The system, once you uh, put in the parameters, actually dials in on its own, and there's a valve that adjusts that does the work of humans. So there's an example where the machine is making operational mechanical changes where humans used to. So there has to be an input and then there has to be an output. And we want both these, these numbers. So now if you look at injection molding, the biggest challenge is that we have the inputs, and but we don't have the outputs coming back. Nobody gives us back what those things are. So if I want to study the effect of, let's say, packing pressure on the dimension of the part. Everybody's changing packing pressure as a processor, but nobody knows what is the extent to which that dimension has changed. AI's ability, especially large language models, help companies be able to insulate themselves from the technical risk of uh, losing that knowledge um, as people uh, retire. Plastic processing uh, plants are complex. So for us, it came down to how can we simplify things and satisfy our customers. And when you look at Industry 4.0, it started with sensors and alarms of notifying somebody something was, something was going wrong. When it look, comes to equipment, we've been gathering data for years. One of the consistent things that we've heard from plastics processors over and over and over again is that you might have a day shift uh, that has a lot of technical expertise uh, around a subject, but the night shift doesn't or you might have one plant that has technical expertise in an area that doesn't get shared with another plant. You couple that with some of this artificial intelligence that's available now, you couple that with uh, Industry 4.0, and it's kind of evolving into just automation and making things easier for the customers. It's always been driven by making things easier for the customers. And so by training a generative AI, from all the information, uh, then you can share that information. Everyone can have kind of an assistant uh, that is intelligent, that can speak their language, uh, that can relay that kind of technical information, no matter the shift, no matter the team, uh, no matter the plan.